Welcome to Ancient Egypt, a beautiful place filled with rich history, and you can't say fairer than that. However, the view sphinx, and everybody is in denial. <laughs> <laughs> this week we'll be joining some weird geezers and boarding a chariot of the gods to see just what happens when you put our head through an ancient old ring. Yes, it's Stargate. And joining me to realise there's no doorbells in Egypt, so he'll have to toot and come in, is Dan Thomas. Uh, morning. I think morning. we're done. This one I hadn't seen in 25 years, I now realise. Mm. And I used to watch it a lot in the 90s, and I thought it was fine. And I thought, if I watch it now, I bet it'll, from nostalgia, I'll absolutely love it. That's not what happened. <laughs> I just this is the dumbest fucking film. I've, it doesn't make any sense. I remember reading about it in um, Starburst when I was fourteen, hmm. and even then, I don't know. It wouldn't happen now, but the press guys hadn't stopped the actors being interviewed and going, well, when I read the script, I thought it was shit, but I needed the money. <laughs> right? You know, that's actual James Spade. They used to say that back then. And yeah. I remember thinking, ah, it's fine. It's not that bad. He's just being grumpy. Hmm. Watching it now. I am like, no, he's right. This is absolute dog shit. <laughs> I remember it being good, you know. I remember, I think maybe it's because it was the first big one they did before Independence Day. It's um, Roland Emmerich and, he's, and Dean Devlin, isn't it? Um, yeah. Just cherry picking from other films. And I think when I first saw this, I was too young to realise that's what was happening. Oh, yeah. Inspiration they, they, here. And... Oh, yeah. I mean, most of it is like, so they've ripped this off from Aliens. They've ripped this yes. off from, I mean, Lawrence Arabia. They literally said, we want to make Lawrence Arabia in space. Yeah. Didn't I think, know, did they? No, they were like, oh, no. why hasn't anyone ever made Lawrence Arabia in space? You boys read Dune, have you? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, a, it's a shame because it's, it's, I mean, we might as well say it now because we'd said it off air. The music doesn't deserve this film. <laughs> I, I was. I had a quick look at the trivia. Mm. This was this was uh, Dave Arnold, David Arnold's um, big break because he was when he got hired to do this. He was working at like an HMV in London. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad they went with him. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if they go with their, their, their first choice, Chas and Dave would have fucked it. I think. <laughs> I don't know. They might have proved it. Snoop, oh, Luke, be right at me. <laughs> you don't stop reading hieroglyphics. Yeah. Give it a rest. <laughs> The, the beginning of this film I'd completely confused with or thrown in with the beginning of The Fifth Element. Oh, interesting, yeah, okay. I'd, I'd remembered that the big fat um, the big fat aliens turned up. And... It's, it's not dissimilar no. uh, production design. No, it's not. We start off in 1928 in Egypt. I do like this big. More f- I, I feel like every third film back in this period started off with... Uh, a Middle Eastern man yelling at a white man, Professor, Professor, yeah, look! Yeah. And I miss that. And he comes through and he's just showing him a, a wart on his knee. Is this all right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Might not be. Get it checked out. I'm not that sort of doctor, mate. <laughs> what about... No, don't. Don't put your trousers down. Um, you see, they, they found some Egyptian hieroglyphic things. Next to it, they found like a giant polo. And they thought, i tell you what we'll do. <laughs> Instead of leaving it, yeah, we will all as a team lift it up onto its narrowest edge, mm-hmm. which in no way is a risk... Uh, to any to it falling on top of us, or it, it just looks better, or it's shattering because we don't know what it's made of. No, but then we cut to present day, which in in, in our world is nineteen ninety four. Very much, yeah. Yeah, and we meet Daniel Jackson, James Spader, who's in a hotel in the middle of the day giving a talk on Egyptian history, yeah. which is sold out. There's like 80 people. Like, I'd be glad to get these numbers, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. on a Thursday night. Uh, and then I don't know who, who the fuck is going to win of these things. And then he says something like, oh, do you know what? I reckon the uh, pyramids weren't built by people. <laughs> and then everyone just goes, ah, oh, fuck this. Yeah, like, off, ugh, ugh, what, who by? Aliens? Ha, 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 ha. And then they leave. I yeah. would, if anything, that's going to make the talk more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that all those people left his talk because they'd come thinking he was going to talk about the pyramid mint chocolate thing that was around in the 80s? New Terry's Pyramid, mummies and daddies love them. Do you think they'd gone, at last, <laughs> someone's doing an hour-long just, lecture? I'm going to get, even though it just says Egypt, historical Egypt talk, <laughs> Pyramid, I'm going to assume <laughs> that at some point he will talk about the walnut whip. With mint in it. 
with mint in it. But um, the young girl from the beginning is now an old lady. Yeah, yeah. Played by the lady from Creepshow, who's fa- in Father's Day. <laughs> Well, she brings the Air Force with her. She brings oh, two yeah. guys from the Air Force and they stop him as he's coming out of this rain-soaked hotel with his two bits of baggage and usher him into a limousine. Mm. And honestly, it gives the impression this is... A, and offers him a job, yeah. a translation job. Now then, I know this was pre-email, mm. but there's other ways to offer somebody a job. Oh, yeah, oh, there's one other piece of information. Oh, yeah. For some reason, she goes, oh, are these your parents? And he goes, foster parents. Oh, yeah. Thereby foreshadowing the fact that nobody gives a fuck about him on Earth. And yeah. at the end, he can just live on an alien planet with a bit of... Oh, God. Yeah, I hadn't yeah. thought about that. Oh, yeah. oh, God. Do you reckon that was... They'd got to the end of the script and gone, finished. And then one went, oh, no, what if... People oh, what if his might... dad loves yeah. him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll go back and put that line in. Oh, we'll put... Oh, no, is that a picture of your dad? Yeah, he reckons I'm a... C- <laughs> Oh, fine then. So she takes him to the lab where um, Richard Kind is there. Lovely Richard Kind. Lovely, Lovely, Richard Lovely, wonderful Richard Kind. We find out that him and his mates have been working on this giant thing for three years. Yeah, thick as pig shit. Thick as shit. Because the thing is, it's not... And and James Spader's there for two weeks before going, what if it was... What if that pattern there... Hmm. uh, is the same as one of the more famous patterns in human history, Orion? Um. Oh, yeah. We should talk about Kurt Russell because um, he's at home in his son's bedroom contemplating shooting himself. Yeah. I mean, this is where I've written the first one. Uh, so this is the alien setup because mm. later on he's going to have a develop a friendship with a with a, with a young boy. A young boy, right? Yeah. And there's nothing dodgy about it. No. He just he offers him a fag and says, "Puff on that." He says, "This is the day um, before days before paedophilia." It's fine. Yeah, it was fine, and, yeah. and before cancer apparently. Mm. Oh yeah, and. Um, we find out his son accidentally shot himself with his gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but also, how are you supposed to feel something? Because the, the two guys who come to... T- Again, where's oh the God. email? Yeah. We've come to let you know you've been reactivated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will just leave you to sit looking sad in your room with a gun. I'm sure we'll see you Tuesday. But yeah, his, his plan to get over his grief... And I, I'm not a grief counsellor. I don't know if I want to... I want to make that clear. Yeah. But I don't think it's therapeutic to sit in your son's bedroom who shot himself with your gun... With a gun, looking at pictures of your son. No. I think your mind will make associations with that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Kurt Russell's like, oh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah. I'm going to go for a jog. Yeah, exactly. With a, without the gun. I have a wank. <laughs> Not in your son's bedroom, that's... No. no. Kurt Russell is really good in this. He is amazing. Because he's very stoic in this, because he had a wank and shot his kid. Yeah, that's right. But... Um, but it's the same guy who's playing Jack Burton, who's this amazing, lively character, and Snake Plissken, mm. and Elvis. Mm. He never really played the same character twice, which is maybe the reason he never became, like, a proper megastar. Yes, and a lot but of the films brilliant. that are now considered classics fucking bombed when they came out as well, which didn't help. Of his films, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yet, yeah. and yet this did quite well. Uh, isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah. Um, Jackson, yeah, he, he, he works out the hieroglyphics refer to a stargate, which uses constellations. But what gets me is that it, the US colonel people obviously know exactly what it means because when he draws the picture, one of them goes, my God, he did it. And you're like, well, if you knew it was that, why didn't you do that three years ago? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, this is the first bit I was like, this is messy. Like, do they know what it is? Because sometimes it feels like the military knows exactly what it is and sometimes it's like, oh, we don't know. It could be a big cock ring. We don't know. <laughs> and it's never quite clear how much information the military has about this bleeding thing. <laughs> Richard Keel comes in and goes, oh, thanks, I lost that when I was on holiday in Egypt. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so they then, they then work it all out and he, they, they, they have this machine already set up that they put the, the giant gate Exactly, out. they must have set they up an entire known. thing. They must have bleed known. Yeah, and I like this effect. Obviously, it's completely ripped off from the abyss. Now, I, when I was a kid, I thought that was CGI, but actually it isn't because it's too high depth. So mm. when, the, when it shimmers... When it settles down, that's CGI. But when yeah. the like the whirlpool effect comes out, yeah, that's that's a f- they filmed that and superimposed it onto it. Yeah, because yeah, we should talk about that because the effects in this aren't great, are they? No, I I kind of wrote that down because there's I mean the other big effect that's later on is the um the thing that I think we first had in Batman where the shield comes off the yeah. the thing and and they kind of do that with the the headgear of the uh, Ra's guard later on. And at the time, I think, oh, that looked really cool. But mm. you watch it now, and it is shonky as fuck. It's really bad. I mean, the, the the spaceship effects and this this effect in particular are great. But the it's really the masks I'm talking about when the masks come off. It looks 
bad. But I'm guessing the budget wasn't huge for The this. budget was all right. I think it was over 60 million, which is a chunk of change back then. Jay Davison got a million dollars. I know, because he yeah. said, I don't want to do it. Don't well, do we it. want you to do it. Yeah. Oh, oh, give me a million quid then, Prex. Hmm. Uh, uh, all right. And, ah, f- uh, and then it, I think he was immediately like, right, I'm doing this. And then <laughs> after that, I will do literally nothing, nothing again for the rest of my life. Yeah. So the wormholes opened. They send in a little giant probe robot thing. Uh, the reach the reaches an arm in, and I just thought, what if an alien on the other side's having a shit? <laughs> He's reading the Egyptian Times, sitting on the bog. Yeah, it can be like the, the golden eye start. It was yeah. just like an alien having a shit, and a little robot going, "Sorry, if I got to knock." <laughs> so then Catherine goes up to him and says, "Look, I'm really impressed." With what you've done here in two weeks with these pricks have been spending two years doing nothing. So she says, look, I'll give you this necklace that you saw her buying when she was a little kid from a market. Yeah. Uh, it's my lucky necklace. And he goes, I'll give you a bloody... No, he doesn't say that. <laughs> yeah. It's got um, Hello Kitty on it. Where the fuck did you buy this again? <sighs> uh, shut up. So she says, yeah, take this with you. And you're thinking, well, this won't mean anything. Yeah. So then he joins O'Neill and his team, one of which is French Stewart. I love the fact that French Stewart's It's so weird that the guy from the dopey one from Third Rock from the yeah. Sun is playing a Marine. Do you think spending all this time in the desert uh, made him do that squinting eyes thing he did for the rest of his career? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. It is, it is. He's not very good at this. No, he's not. Fair, he's not bad, but it's like he hasn't got a Marine's build. No. He does look like he should be playing the dopey one from the sitcom. It's like freaking Jason Alexander from Seinfeld and Aliens. That's what it's like. <laughs> To be fair, they laid an egg in my throat, Jerry. They did what? An egg in my throat. So they emerge, and there's beautiful desert, and, and James Spader just goes, I knew it. You knew what? What? That there's deserts. You don't know where you are right now. Exactly. You could be in Croydon. If, in fact, <clears throat> they, I assumed that they had gone to Egypt to film this. So did I, yeah. No, no. it's just Arizona. Yep. Honestly, if they turn the camera around, there's a Dunkin' Donuts right there. <laughs> So then um, James Spader goes, right, we're here, brilliant. What I'll do now is I'll get all of the symbols we need to go back home. And, oh, no, I can't. There's one missing. Yeah, you know, <whistles> bit of trouble, boys. Don't get angry. You're going to laugh. Yeah. We and fucked. They live what it is. They, it, again, it doesn't feel like there's been much planning here. Going, oh, can you get us back? Yeah, definitely. Mm. All right. And can we just double check what the plan is? Just listen. The source of this is trust me, bro. Right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Right? I'll find it. And they're like, well, what if you don't? Well, then you're fucked. So he goes to go and get it, and we meet a little cow that looks like, a big cow that looks like Willie Nelson. How quickly did you jump on when you got the script? Oh, pretty quick, because it sounded like fun. And uh, that's what I'm into a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> was it fun? What was, like, what was it like on the set? Fun. There's a bit of um, on IMDb trivia, it says... The four-legged alien creatures are actually a horse wearing a costume. I was like, no. yeah, we do not. <laughs> you didn't have to put that in the spoilers section, dickhead. They then realise that there's a, another tribe of humans. This, I mean, this film is, unfortunately, one of those white saviour films that are quite annoying. Absolutely. Annoying. Yeah. <clears throat> Where everybody's too stupid to have figured out that these people who are wearing actual masks are wearing masks. Yeah. There's a bit there yeah, where they meet... I put down that he was like the slave master, but he's not, because he's one of the humans. Hmm. He's just working there. So maybe he's like a foreman. And it's James Spader. First thing he does is, ah, oh, do you want a Mars bar? Yeah. Like, you don't know anything about these people. Do you remember and... how smallpox got brought from the new, to the new world? <laughs> yeah. You're going to give everyone fucking type 2 diabetes. It also looks like a, a shit... If you were, well, yeah. you've never seen one before, you're like, why is he giving me a shit? Yeah, exactly. It looks like the chocolate from, like, Caddyshack. Yes, Bill Murray, the one it? in the pool. Because that could have been a pr- that could have been a prank. Good. Oh, if a guy walks up to you holding a turd and says, "Eat this," yeah. you don't go. Well, I hate to be rude. Yeah, they should have had because if he, he's the former, and they should have done a Flintstones thing where he pulls the cat's tail and it squeals for the horn for the work to be finished, <laughs> and then he slides down the back of a dog and gets <laughs> in a um, car made out of rocks. Well, funny you should say this. Oh yeah. Because do you know who the first choice was for the James Spader role? Who? Rick Moranis, and he turned it down to do Flintstones. Good man. I can't it's imagine. Fascinating it's one of those ones I can't imagine anyone but James Spader playing this, even though he doesn't really bring his James Spader ness to it. Um, he's quite sort of goofy. He, he's goofy, and he's he, he, everything's a, a huge wonder and 
I did not remember that James Spader was properly hot for about eight months in the early 90s. Three months, yeah. And no offence to him, but he mu- he must have made a chunk of money. Yeah. Put all that money into, with all due respect to him, carbohydrates. <laughs> <laughs> because he's still a very talented actor. But he's he is aged in a way that most movie stars don't. Like, he hasn't gone, I need a bit of work. Mm. He's gone, I need more white flour. And bless him, his beautiful luscious hair, which is on full display here, betrayed him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, towards the end of the 90s, his hair just went, all right, bye. Bye, cheers. <laughs> so then he gets given a woman. Who's really, she's really good. Yeah, she is. She's very charismatic. I think she was an Israeli actress called Millie Avatar. Mm. And uh, this should have been a breakthrough for her. And just, she was like, fuck this. Yeah. And he's like, no, thanks. I appreciate it, but no, because she's very much like, you can have my body just for wearing a necklace. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, that's, that's, I'm not going to do that. But the meanwhile, Kurt Russell has uh, a young, her brother, I think it is, isn't it? A younger brother. Oh, are they? Are they? Oh, okay. I think they're the kids of the lead tribesman who ate the turd. Right. <laughs> um, he hangs around with Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell's like, hey, hey, do you want a cigarette? And then the kid inhales it and goes, <coughs> as is the thing. And Kurt Russell's like, ha, 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 ha. And then the kid goes for the gun. He goes, no, don't yeah. touch that. Don't touch that. That is dangerous. Yeah. But you smoke smoke as many as you want. Yeah. That's odd. I mean, that's just, obviously that's something that we'll never see in a film again. I mean, that'd be funny if James Spader writes to him later on from the other, you know, he passes a note through the Stargate going, by the way, he died <laughs> yeah. of cancer. So yeah. thanks well for done. that. Well <laughs> done. two you've killed. So the Ra's ship lands on top of the pyramid that all of Kurt Russell's men are waiting in. And we get the reveal of the soldiers. Now, we don't see them at first. They attack all of them. And then the last one, we see they're like one of those dog people that you see on the side of pyramids. Yeah. My only quibble with this film, yeah. well, actually, not my own, my biggest quibble, is that why not make the, apart from Ra, why not make the henchmen creatures? Because they'd be more intimidating than people wearing masks. Well, I'm going to guess the answer is money. Yes. Uh, but the other answer is a lack of invention on part of the, mm. the guys who made this. My biggest quibble is a lack of action. Because when this scene starts, I'm like, oh, finally, an hour yeah. in, we get an action scene. And it lasts 40 seconds. It's not really an action scene. There's mm. very little action in this action film. Yeah, it's true. Um, so then Jackson realises that Ra is an alien... Oh, yeah. We He's see, like, found the mm. entire backstory. Mm. She's shown him a corridor. That's right. Not like that. He finds the hieroglyphs and can translate them immediately really fluidly. Really fluidly, yeah. But then we did see that earlier when he first came into the lab and they'd all... I mean, we forgot to mention that. When Richard Kine was showing him the hieroglyph, hieroglyphs he translated and he was like, no, nope, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. It's this, it's this. So they're, they're trying to say that they Yeah, isn't do it that. like, oh, this doesn't say gate to the stars, yeah, it says yeah. stargate. Yeah. And Richard Kine must be like, it's the same thing, prick. Yeah, yeah, thanks, you fucking pedant. Now I haven't got a job. And he, not only that, he finds right next to the full backstory of the yeah. entire planet, <clears> the, the seven... Oh, wait, he finds the six of the seven symbols he needs to get on. Yeah. And then there's a firefight against Ra's men. I worked out through an action scene and then immediately after I got, oh, that's over. Yeah. So they're then brought for Ra and with the, then the the Ra dog men take off their masks with a really bad stop yeah. motion effect. Ra is also, he goes, oh, while you were doing the mucking about, I found this. And Kurt Russell's like, uh-oh. And James Penn is like, what, what, what's that? <coughs> and he goes, it's a, it's a bloody nuclear bomb. Is this your impression of Ra? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad, is it? <laughs> Oh, There's an amazing bit. Mm. He's need, he's gonna go to shoot because he grabs the laser sticks yeah. off, off the bad guys and he mm. goes to shoot Ra. But then he's got Ra's got a bunch of like groupy kids. Yes, half naked groupy kids and they gather around Ra and Kurt Russell can't can't shoot him. It's he's like, ah, like, oh, I can't kill a kid. But not a jump ahead. At the end, he blows up the entire spaceship. Yeah, and the kids are still on there. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I can't shoot a kid. Can you incinerate him in space? Oh, yeah, fuck him. Look, as long as I don't see it, it's fine. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. But Jackson's body, for some reason, Ra brings him back to life. <laughs> yeah. 
And then, and then he explains, you know, we can bring back people, no problem. Yeah, what I've written mm. down is, I, why have they brought him back to life? Yeah. And the reason is for Ra to explain his plan, which yes. is to blow up Earth. Yeah. Now then, I know that's a trope in films, but you don't usually... You're no. usually supposed to blurt it out to James Bond. You don't go... Anyway, like I was saying, is he dead? Mm. Fuck. Right. Bring him back to life. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to bomb the planet. All right, bye. Sorry, it's just that it really annoys me when I can't... When I had when I was in the middle of talking, and someone dies. I through. That was so rude, just yeah. you know. Yeah. And they're going to do like a public execution, and he wants Not James Spader to do it. It's like a punishment, mm. which is fucking hell. Yeah. He's a terrible employer. What are you going yeah. to do? I'm going to kill my workforce. Yeah. And actually, to be fair, I wrote down, why would you punish your workforce? I like guess that's just not good economics. Yes. And then I remembered, this guy basically is just a Tory then. I suppose he could, he could bring them all back to life. You killed Steve. He was really good at building bridges. So I just bring him in. I'll, I'll bring him well, back to life. I hope he's got Booper then. Anyway, <clears throat> so he has to kill Kurt Russell and his men, but what they none of them realise is that the little boy Kurt Russell made friends with and his lads have found all the weapons. Yeah, and learned how to operate. And learned how to operate them. If you and me got hold of a couple of machine guns and tried to figure out how they work... Oh, my God, can you imagine? Because we wouldn't be able to. No. Instead of shooting Kurt Russell, he turns around and shoots one of the guards, which obviously was going to happen. The, the young lads with machine guns cause a diversion and everyone manages to get away. And they're like, yay, brilliant. And then as James Spader is sitting there, he goes, by the way, they've got a nuclear bomb that Kurt Russell brought here. And everyone's like, what did you, you do that for? And he said, it was my orders and I was going to die with it because I got nothing left to live for. But we literally came here on a robot that could have delivered a bomb. Why are they killing yeah. Kurt Russell? I, I asked them to. Yeah. You need to cheer up. Yeah, you do. Why didn't you go and dig up your son? Bring him back and then use Ra's yeah! machine. That's a good point. Instead yeah. of doing what you were gonna do, what mm. if we go back, get your son and heal him? Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Oh, he could smoke all my cigarettes again. Don't do that. <laughs> well, I gave him the gun to stop him smoking. Um, <clears throat> so. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like you just pointed out a massive plot all there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes. Instead of doing what you were gonna do, what if you had the happiest ending ever? Mm. Oh, not, not like, like that. that. What is going on? What Shut is up. Going on? So <clears throat> the young lad who smokes and now fires guns said, "Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna celebrate by drawing the image I always draw when I celebrate." And he draws it, and James Bay goes, "My God, that's it! That's the last symbol." <sighs> that is not a penis. Isn't it amazing how much the film slows down here? Yeah? Really, because they just had a whole, yeah. relatively big action. And we're only twenty minutes from the end. We had yeah. twenty minutes yeah. from the end of this action epic, and there's been no action. So O'Neill says, "Right, well, we'll go in. We'll fight our way through. You get the Stargate going again, but I'm going to stay here and set off the bomb. You don't need to." Uh, but he says he's going to do it because his son's dead and his wife's boring, <laughs> which seems to be the issue. Yeah. Morning. Loads of the dog men turn up. And well, they, two of them turn two up. Two of them turn up. You they, realize they only had two of those costumes. Yeah, definitely. And they kill the, the girl. She is now dead. And nobody cares. No. But Jackson goes, Ah, oh, I loved her. So he takes her back <clears throat> to the ship. Yeah. Do you love her, do you? Yeah. What's her surname? Oh. Um, Ra has, has fucked off to his back to his spaceship. And Jackson comes back with his girl. And they managed to teleport the bomb onto Ra's ship. And we get the great image of just before Ra dies, the lovely Jay Davidson's face is replaced by a little puppet going, oh, <laughs> looks like E.T.'s cock. <laughs> or the little man from Beetlejuice with the tiny head. Yeah. And it is disintegrated in space. With a bunch of kids. With a bunch of kids who are in the next room playing on the Nintendos. 
So they're all dead, and then uh, everyone's happy, and then O'Neill goes, oh, I feel much better now, so I'm going to go back. I love that. Yeah. It's genuinely it's the first time we see Kurt Russell smile is when yeah. he's just killed half a dozen kids. <laughs> he goes, you know what? I don't feel so bad about my kid now, because it's like dropping the ocean now, isn't it? <laughs> 